guys, Mudslinger Tool back at you. I try to mix it up a little bit when I'm doing little projects around the house and stuff like that. Uh, if it's something that I think maybe somebody's searching on the internet, I throw it out there. Um, maybe maybe what I know helps you. Today what we're going to be doing, we're going to be making a set of wind chimes. Got a couple sets of wind chimes in the backyard, um, but they're, they're small wind chimes. They got small diameter pipes, you know, like finger size. Um, they make nice noise, but it's all kind of high pitch noise. They blow real easy, so uh, and they make a lot of noise. Um, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for kind of like a church bell sound, you know, the big dong, 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 dong. And uh, to do that, what we need is we need bigger diameter pipes and we need longer pipes. So what I got is I got, I got some of these. Uh, it's probably about a one and a half inch diameter pipe. They're, they're relatively long. I'd say it's probably about three and a half, four foot. Um, we'll cut them down to the right dimensions, um, but these are these are actually from when it had a, a canopy, like you park a car underneath, and the wind got a hold of it, tore it all up, and uh, over the years, I pieced it back together, and the last time, decided I didn't want to piece it back together anymore, so I saved the saved pieces to do something with, and so my canopy is going to turn into some wind chimes, so it doesn't matter what you have. You're gonna have metal pipe, steel pipe. Um, you're gonna have aluminum, copper. Obviously, aluminum's the best because it doesn't oxidize or anything else. Everything else is, you know, even these. I'm gonna paint them and stuff, but they're gonna rust. Um, but I mean, you, you get a good 10, 12 years out of them before they start rusting if you paint them good. But so we got we got our pipes on a set of wind chimes. Typically, what you have is you have five six or eight is the amount of pipes that you have so I don't know exactly why but um, that's usually the standard for wind chimes um, and so you want five six or eight pipes at various lengths you can choose the length uh, the length really if you want to go like a guitar E A D GBE you can get a you can actually take a guitar tuner and we'll get to it later but when you hang them you can strike them with your guitar tuner and uh, and cut them just keep cutting them until you get the the note that you want and then go to the next pipe you don't really have to be that precise with them though as long as you cut them at slightly different lengths it's gonna be you're gonna have a nice melody um, but if you want to get that precise with it that's how you would do it to, to tune each pipe they say um, but I'm not gonna do all of that I'm just gonna have nice sound of wind chimes and I'm not gonna spend 18 hours doing it but so what makes up a set of wind chimes you have your top I cut I happen to have a, a few huge black walnut logs so I cut me a nice slab of black walnut this is a super sought after wood. So this is gonna be my top. I gotta to have a pretty big top here because I need to support six or eight of these tubes. So in order to support six or eight of these tubes with a striker in the middle and have them separated a little bit, you gotta have a big top. So you got your top. Obviously, you're gonna have it strung and hung at the top. Then your pipes in the middle You'll have what they call a striker or a clapper. So I cut another small piece of black walnut. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave the, the bark on it because um, I think it'll get knocked off, but um, I'll leave a live edge anyhow. But you got your striker and then underneath that, what you'll have hanging just past the pipes, they call a sail. So I'm gonna take another piece of black walnut and probably get a little bit creative with it and make the sail. I'm going to cut these pipes, drill, hole, drill holes in them to hang them. Um, I won't do a whole lot of talking. I'll, I'll fast forward all of the crap and uh, and put some 
put some text in here so you guys can understand what I'm doing and uh, we'll get to it. Okay, guys. So we got our uh, we we got our cracks in a in a black walnut. We got our wood glue in them. Our wood glue is dried. Um, you saw in a in a fast forward. I taped off the cracks first on the back and on the sides. Leave one side open. And then you just constantly drip the wood glue in there put it in there um, come back a few hours something like that after you see a sink mark put some more wood glue on it and repeat until it's flush up to the top or pretty flush this one right here it's not totally flush but it's pretty flush this one over here is flush but even this one, it'll give it some character. And what that'll do, that'll keep your log from splitting. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this tape off. I think I'm gonna have to use a razor blade to take this tape off. This tape here, I think is gonna peel off pretty good for me. Well, as you can see, it's peeling off pretty well till we get to the top where we're attached to the glue. But and as you can see the the bottom side of that one it's a small crack so so that one's already healed this one here you can see some bubbling down in the bottom but I'll take a, a razor blade and scrape this tape off all the way around and then we're gonna sand all the you see the shiny spots where the glue is from me uh, putty knife in it into the hole um, we're gonna sand all of that down until we got a uh, a normal piece of log here. All right, so we got all our stuff sanded down here. We got our our stinger. Took the, the tape and taped over the over the crack and put the glue in there and had that dry. Now it's all sanded down and good to go. You want some petting? I got our top piece. Uh, let's see. Here's our crack on this one right here. That's all sanded down and. Filled and sanded down and ready to go. I think there was another one on this side. But uh, everything's, everything's sanded down. There's some nice black walnut. Then 
I cut me a, I drew a butterfly on one, on a piece for the sail. And then with my Dremel, after I drew the details in there with my Dremel, I kind of carved them in. I don't know if you can. It's a little, a little rough, but I mean, it's all sanded down smooth, but I mean, the carving is a little rough. That's kind of what I was going for, not like a laser design. So we've got our sail. And now what we have to do is we have to figure out what's going to, we gotta hang five chimes. So we gotta have a center and evenly spaced five holes for a rope to go through to hang the chime, rope, chain, whatever you want. So what I did is I found, and best way to do it here is I found this lid that with the size diameter pipes that I'm using will give me enough room to still have the stinger in the middle. Um, and that way, what I will do, you can, they have, um, I forget the word, I don't know, they, they have all of these different ways to figure out the circumference of a circle. It usually involves pi, and I'm not real bright, so what I did is I just measured, I'm going to use this line right here in the middle, not the outside. So I'm gonna use this one. The good thing about it being a cap is it has a little dimple where the middle is. So you don't have to guess about where the middle is. Um, and then I just measured all the way around and then divided that by five. And that's how I came up with where my five holes should be to make everything evenly spaced out. You can do it however you want, pi times d and all of that shit, or however you want to do it. Um, but so I'm gonna take my my punch. I'm gonna punch out the middle. Obviously not on here. I'm gonna do it on the plywood. But I'm gonna punch out the middle. Then I'll lay this down on here. Make my punch into my black walnut. Then I'll be able to start drilling my holes on this one here. I want it to kind of hang. I want to do it a little, you know, everything always hangs like this. But I figure it might look a little bit better if it hung by one wing so it was kind of, so it's kind of sideways, you know. Get it where it's, where it's hanging kind of in this area something like that so in order to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to drill a small hole for the rope to fit through down into it down into it here and then i'll drill a, a hole on the side a larger hole all the way through so that i can push the rope in fish it out tie a knot on it and, and let it hang on the end just so it's it just looked a little better than having it wrapped around there. But, so, I'll take, a, take it away. So we got all our holes drilled. To slightly larger than the diameter of this line here and now what we have to do this line by the way this is I think uh, 650 foot of I forget the diameter of it but it's uh, made for fishing I actually got it at, uh, at Walmart in the fishing section it's to run a trout line or a long line it's 235 pound test and it's it's braided nylon so 
That's why I figured this would be good for the chimes. I mean, obviously these aren't 235 pounds, but my board here <clears throat> is just shy of 18 inches. So I'm gonna measure twice and cut five that are 18 inches so that I can have at least a foot over the top of the top piece because that has to be all bound together and, and tied to hang on a hook. And then one, the sixth one, have these long, I got these long chimes. So the sixth one, I need the foot over the top piece. Then it's gotta be able to run all the way down through here with a little extra space to hold the sail underneath the chimes. So we'll cut five at double this. The last one we'll cut using a measurement for this with this chime. Got my handy dandy torch here. Um, as I cut them, as you can see, I just unwrapped this minutes ago and that much of it is, it started unraveling. So you can't tie a knot in it and still feed it through the holes. So we're gonna cut them, burn them, cut them, burn them. That way the ends are solid and skinny. So plus it'll make it easier to poke it through the holes. Okay, as you can see, I abandoned the whole cut and burn technique just because with this being an nylon line, it's not like a diamond braided line or anything like that. It's just twisted. So almost instantly when you cut it, it starts, the, the strands start fraying. But once you let it fray, it loses its integrity when it's, if it's, uh, I got one down here. When it's like this if you got a piece that's that's like this where it's kind of come unwound even though the ends put together that little this little part of it here loses its integrity it's not gonna hold as much weight um, I got extra line cut anyhow but so so I don't know if you caught it on the slow-mo but instead I was holding my spot and I make a loop like this and I take my torch and I would just burn right at the middle till it melted. And the minute it melts, it's not wax, it's it's not rubber, it's not plastic, it's not staying real hot. So the minute that it melts, you can just kind of take it like this and, and do one of these. And you end up with the end of a line. And, looks you know pretty much like that so it's just melted enough to keep it together all right so we have <clears throat> I 15 inches from the bottom of the rope I tied a double knot and then fed the ropes up this way so that left me 15 inches down here to be able to mess with tying knots and, and hanging the chime tubes. Um, you can see I I strung an antler in the middle. I might adjust that or take it out. I don't know. Um, and then I had just a, all of this is just temporary knottage, but I got a knot tied here underneath the striker and then a knot just tied around the sail. <clears throat> and actually what I have figured out is because of the circumference of you know, how far around it is in between chimes, my tiny little striker and my huge heavy sail, um, it would have to it probably would not blow. It's more like a tornado siren at this point. Um, because, you know, it could move around this much and, and make no noise whatsoever. 
So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to probably double the size of that striker just so that if it makes much movement at all, it'll smack the pipes. You can see they got decent sound to them. Um, but so now what I gotta do, I gotta remake a striker, but I don't need to uh, involve anybody in that. But I'll unstring all this, take it apart and throw some stain on the black walnut and on uh, the new striker that I make and on the butterfly and then I'll get back to you guys when I'm putting it all together but so far if I got enough room to back up here it's super long but that's what it all so looks like I had a little stump of mulberry hanging around so I remade that striker now as you can see without much movement at all it'll actually ring now we're gonna since this is black walnut um, you know, I keep saying black walnut but very sought after very expensive wood um, I'm gonna go with a golden oak stain if you had a golden oak or a natural stain that's pretty much what you want for the for black walnut or any kind of wood that's got a really nice color because you don't want to actually color the wood black walnut would pretty much if you licked your finger and rubbed it on the wood the colors of the wood it, it's almost black and in spots um, and so we don't want to stain it up with something that's gonna just make it brown you don't want to paint it um, and you don't want to just clear it like a natural stain or something like that you could use, um, and then put some polyurethane on it if you want. But if you just clear it and a poly doesn't really soak into the wood as much as, uh, as a stain penetrates into the wood, even a, even a natural stain, natural stains almost clear, but it's more like an oil. So it penetrates into the wood and brings out all them, all them pretty uh, wood grain colors of whatever wood you happen to be using. So that's why the lightest thing I got right now is golden oak and I ain't going out to buy any. So a golden oak is, is, has very little pigment to it. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so what we got now is we strung our strings through the painted piece, well, through the stain piece and the gloss piece, the top, and then I got them hung from a hook. You pull all the strings. This is a piece of uh, galvanized wire, thin, thin, gauge, thin gauge galvanized wire. And the whole premise here is that you put them, you, put, you hook it over the hook, throw a level on it, and pull the wires that your cords until the level levels out. Then you adjust the level, slide it through this way instead, and make sure it's level and keep doing that 
Okay, so we have successfully assembled our, our chimes here. We got our deer antler on the top, wood nice and stained in gloss. That's our beautiful black walnut here. Um, up at the top, feed the ropes through. Then we already went through gathering it and and then crimping, crimping the top after you fold it over. Um, I'm gonna do something with this, a little, little trimming. Um, then uh, three inches is what we have here between the top and the wire that mounts the chimes. So what I did is I just marked the rope with a black marker and pulled it through up to the point and then looped it around one more time before I tied my knots on top of it just to make it secure, make sure it wasn't slipping. This way they're all pretty much at the same side. Um, one thing I do need to mention is you see how these strings, they don't actually touch the sides of the pipe. Down inside we have they just go through, they're crimped over each other and clamped. It's a super thin piece of galvanized. And they can't, you can't have them touching on the sides of the pipe because what you're counting on here is vibration. If that's touching on the sides of the pipe, it's going to absorb the vibration, it's gonna deaden it. And you're, you're, the, the chimes tubes will, will sound they just won't sound much. So then we move down to our stinger. And again, just got one knot under there. But you see the, the stinger is, it's about half. It's about halfway, maybe a little lower than halfway down the longest chime. And you can play with it. You can raise it up, raise it down um, to get the desired sound that you want. Right around the halfway mark is where you have vibrations resonating up the chime tube and down the chime tube. Seems to be your best, uh, the best place. I'm gonna try to, trying to think of a fancy word there. I got nothing. Um, then we'll Move down to the butterfly here. And like I said before, I drilled the one hole at the top, bigger hole at the bottom. So what I did was just fed them through, tied a knot, and you let that slip down inside. And I'll cut this off where the string's down in the hole so it's not. So all of these strings are gonna get cut off. That's one and all of these around here and all of that up there. But here I'll, there we go. There's our finished chimes. Gotta get a better look at it like this. There's our finished chime. So right now, if, church bells and you see the sail isn't moving that much as compared to when I had this this small stinger on there it had to do a lot more moving to possibly ring a chime all right well that's it chimes are all done all that's left to do is throw them outside and hope for a little bit of wind hear them ring like church bells Hopefully this video helped you. If you uh, plan on making yourself a set of chimes, maybe it answered some questions for you. Um, if I got it up here and I happen to be doing it, I'll throw a video out there. Maybe it'll help you do it. Throw me a like. Hit me with a subscribe. And I'll see you.